we have a lot of customers and not so many developers and we can never do everything that people want us to do, especially where you, they have stuff where they want to do their own sort of custom workflowy stuff. And a lot of our customers do have people who can code to some extent, enough to, 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 to come up with a script. And so we wanted to be able to expose um, base light functionality so that people can, can use that to automate stuff. So examples, uh, you know, use our indexer to scan the file system, use all the code we've got to properly handle sequences and frame numbering and all that sort of stuff, metadata, getting of decode parameters, all the decode parameters are normalized so you can work out what the ISO was on all these shots without you having to write something to parse an parse ARRI file or something like this. VFX pools, you know, it's an, an operation which is very automatable, um, but you can make sure it happens with our color science. Uh, and then also modifying timelines, you know, adding CDL numbers from a, from a database, adding LUTs, show LUTs from a database, this sort of stuff. Um, and we support two languages, both JavaScript and Python, um, because essentially the way it works is a client server. So you, you, when you run a script, it actually connects back to a service running on the base light, runs the code there, and then, so we can have different front ends. Uh, we chose JavaScript and Python simply because of hiring practices. Most facilities would use Python, so the, the workflow guys that facilities would have now would, would use Python. But the people that can hire are web, web kiddies, you know, who, 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 who would use JavaScript. And there's absolutely no reason you can't write productivity workflow software in, in JavaScript too. So we've, we're deploying it in a few different ways, and we're finding a few ways to, to give examples. So essentially what we have is a service here called client view. So if I log in as admin, what we have, this is an updated version of the client view that's already in Baselight. So the client view in Baselight at the moment is something where it basically is used for people in client sessions, mainly VFX soups or something, to have the metadata of the shot available so they can write down stuff. But we're finding more and more, especially in the big customers, there are five execs in the room during the grading session. They all want to add stuff. And so what we've done is we've killed two birds with one stone. This is a web app and it's written in JavaScript and it's using FL API. So absolutely everything that's shown here, you could, you could do, uh, or a simplified version if you just wanted to sort of display a thumbnail of, this, of, of a scene or whatever, if you wanted to show something like this. So client view uh, is cool. It sort of, it follows around. So you can imagine it runs on an iPad, it runs on any Mac, or basically if you can have Google Chrome or Safari, it will run. And as, as, the, as the colorist sort of runs around the scene, uh, this follows you. You can double, you can uh, click it to get more information about the time code and the metadata. And also you can add notes. So a client can sit here and go, well, we'll find something with a more realistic note. And we've added uh, support for this inside uh, Shots View. So we have a new tab here, in addition to metadata, file metadata, we have a, a, a shot called client metadata. So basically we have a, a note here from admin saying the shot has been flagged and it's too bright and we can add as many notes as you like. And multiple people can add notes. I'll only show it here because I've only got one connection and uh, multiple shots can have notes. So as many as you like, you can add notes to any shot you like. So I can see even a shot which is not the current shot, make the bite red or something. And all the shots, the, the, we add it to the next shot and then you can add filters like a uh, tab. I want to add a new tab and we'll call it client notes. So now we've got everything that has client data in there. I saved some previous stuff as well, uh, is, is in that thing. So it makes it very easy. Any reports that you generate from that, uh, from that uh, scene, like for a VFX report or something, it will generate a PDF and you can send it to them and it'll have everything they wrote. So it basically allows you to use the base light scene as a sort of repository of what people thought of stuff during a review session. Uh, and essentially all this is written in JavaScript and uh, you can have the source code. So uh, it's just a, it's, it's not simple, but, but, uh, but it's a, it's a, it was the best way we could think of to, to give a good chunk of code which you can copy and paste interesting things out of, of how to do these things, how to get a thumbnail, how to, how to extract metadata, how to update client notes and stuff like this. We could certainly envisage you using it, for example, to merge client notes from some other tool programmatically into a base light scene so they're available. The other thing we're talking, well, I'll quickly show you, is VFX pools. So we have some, some media here from a film called Terminal. Basically, it's a bunch of ARRI raw files, and we, let's say we want to generate some, some OpenEXR files for that. Now, we've got a 
script here I can run IBC 2019 terminal. And it's basically looped through, found all the media that's in there, submitted it to the render queue, and uh, we can see in the queue here, uh, it's starting to render. But what's also cool is we have a new type of view, which, we, which has been written, which we call the baseline view. And this is starting to move some of the uh, administrative tasks uh, which currently have to be done sitting at a base light to a web interface. So for example, uh, we have the render queue. So we can here have a live update of the render queue and the code that does this you can easily see and you can use it to integrate into your own facilities pipelines. So for example, if you wrote a script to submit some VFX pools, you can have in that script monitor when the queue is done and then you can send an email to someone or a summary or whatever. And it's, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, it also has stuff like uh, basic system information, uh, sort of a job browser so you can do export and import and stuff like this. Uh, it has, it can run diagnostics, license installation for example, so rather than having to, needing to run command line scripts, someone can do in license installation or they can write their own code to install licenses when they receive them from us. Um, and various other things. So you get the idea. So essentially we can, it's not finished yet, but we can start um, browsing back in Baselight, see what this looks like. So I can bring up a browser, look inside Flappy VFX pool, and there's a bunch of shots which are uh, EXR files. All the metadata from the ARRI camera has been included by default, so that's why I put in the script. And, but you could specify anything. It's, it's currently film light, T-log linear but you can obviously do that. Now, what order of work was it to do that? So let's, have a, let's just have a look at the code. I know a lot of you aren't coders, that's fine, but I'll just basically, to give you an idea, it isn't very big, right? There's some code to command line elements, there's some code to check that there's an existing scene, and if not, if so, delete it, that's just for demo purposes. Code to create a scene here, code to do a search and scan and find all the media, a loop to insert the media into a, into a scene, code to release it, and then a few lines to insert it into a render manager, okay? And I wrote this in literally 10 minutes by taking our examples which ship with the API and just pasting them together. Here's how you open a scene, here's how you scan a directory, here's how I add a shot to a scene, here's how I add a completed scene to a queue. So, we don't envisage that you have to be some incredible programmer to use this. Uh, we think it should be fairly, for the sort of stuff people commonly do, basic scene creation, go to a shot, add a true light cube, go to a shot, set some decode parameters, that sort of stuff. It should be, from the documentation we provide, um, it should be fairly obvious. Um, and the same thing could be done from JavaScript too. The code would look slightly different, but it would be recognizably the same thing. In terms of, just to preempt questions, in terms of the functionality that is currently exposed and or will be exposed in the first beta, we're concentrating mainly, because this is what basically the beta testers asked for, is we're concentrating mainly on like stuff you could call dailies functionality, i.e. VFX pools, setting decode parameters, inserting show lights, setting burn-ins, programmatically controlling burn-ins so you can uh, specify a burn-in generating um, editorial meter with and without burn-ins, we don't allow you to go to a shot and automatically add paint strokes or something like this. Um, we don't, uh, the only stuff you can insert right now is sequences, LUTs, CDL grades, some base grades, stuff like this. This will be rolling out later in the year in a beta and then obviously once, once we're happy with the stability and everyone and using it then, then, <coughs> then, then we'll, we'll switch it on for real. It's just basically all you'll notice is a, when you install Baselight, there'll be a new service when Baselight starts up called Flappy. And if, as soon as you see that Flappy license, Flappy server, you can write code and connect to it. Mm -hmm.